Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, conference. Um, those are my disclosures. So we know that atherectomy addresses um, uh, clinical challenges of calcified lesions, and um, it does help with uh, drug penetration into the arterial wall that you are treating. It modifies vessel compliance, and um, in cases if you definitely want to avoid stenting, it also can help you to avoid stenting. Uh, and calcium uh, is a bad thing, we already learned that, and it increases the arterial resistance to balloon dilatation. And if you try to balloon um, heavily calcified uh, vessel, you know you have to go to high atmospheres and quite often you see severe um, flow limiting dissection after ballooning this segment. And um, if you deploy the stent uh, in the area that's not well prepped, uh, this stent is gonna look ugly and uh, lead to all kind of uh, issues in um, like restenosis, uh, thrombosis, etc. That's why the consensus panel suggests that atherectomy uh, do. Oops, going backwards somehow. Um, that's why consensus panel suggests that atherectomy should be considered as part of SFA treatment algorithm for the cases with severe calcification if that treated segment did not respond to balloon predilatation. Uh, and Dr. Fonelli, who was here um, uh, on a prior panel, uh, you know, published this uh, interesting data showing that calcium reduces drug-coated balloon efficacy and at one year, patients with uh, high calcification uh, had a lower patency rates lower ankle brachial um, index, and greater uh, late lumen loss and TLR rates. There are many atherectomy devices out there. This is an old slide and already outdated. Now we have many more of them available. But the problem is there is not much data on atherectomy devices. And um, I just um, you know, put some table, uh, and what you can see here, that out of the data that's available and studies published, only a few of them had actually one year primary patency rate. And those that are available, you see that for uh, laser, for example, uh, one year primary patency was quite modest, 54% only for uh, pathway. For jet stream device, it's 61%. And definitive LE, which is directional atherectomy, study showed a better patency. But all of the atherectomy devices, what uh, we learned from uh, this um, available solar atherectomy database um, that uh, they um, lead to lower rates of um, severe dissections and uh, lower rates of bailout stenting. Uh, what about use of atherectomy, atherectomy devices in the drug-coated balloons, uh, drug-coated balloon era? And uh, what we learned from this study that was done um, um, it's called Definitive AR, and uh, Tom Zeller presented this um, in 2014, I believe, uh, for the first time. So if you, uh, he, they did this study when they compared uh, directional atherectomy plus DCB to DCB alone, and uh, they observed the high technical success and lower incidence of flow limiting dissections in uh, the arm that was treated with um, directional atherectomy and DCB versus DCB alone. Um, they also saw a um, trend in improvement of uh, angiographic patency in those patients who had long lesions more than 10 centimeters and uh, who had severely calcified lesions. Uh, we learned from this trial that increased lumen gain with directional atherectomy before DCB resulted in improved patency at 12 months. So you have to, if you are using atherectomy, you have to get serious about this and try to get your residual stenosis to 30% all over if you want um, uh, better patency uh, long term. And uh, at two years, they also uh, saw the trend towards lower CLR in patients who had less than 30% residual stenosis after directional atherectomy. Another interesting study, uh, it's a jet stream uh, calcium study, and Akiko Mihara reported uh, the findings of this study, and it was a prospective uh, multi-center st uh, study of the treatment effect of jet stream in moderately to severely 
uh, calcified peripheral arteries. And uh, for primary endpoint, they used calcium removal and uh, luminal gain as measured by IVOS from pre and post um, treatment. Um, what they found was that, first of all, the device worked really well in, in terms of increasing uh, the minimum luminal area. And it also led to calcium reduction that resulted in a 78% increase in luminal area. You know, we um, inter interventional cardiologists, they know that every time new coronary stent shows up on the market, we go through so-called comparative trials. And uh, at some point it was like a stent bore. So when you have to compare the new stent to one of the on the market, and at least show uh, non-inferiority. But we don't see trials like that in the peripheral wall. So we at our institution did a study. Uh, we compared directional atherectomy versus orbital atherectomy of femoral popliteal artery. And I will show you some um, angiographic and intravascular ultrasound outcomes. It was a prospective open-label trial uh, where patients, 60 patients were randomized in one-to-one -one fashion of directional atherectomy versus orbital atherectomy. And all patients had intravascular ultrasound done before atherectomy, after atherectomy, and all patients were treated after atherectomy with DCB, and after DCB, again, intravascular ultrasound. So the primary endpoints for the study were change in plaque and luminal volume uh, by IVOS and uh, change in angiographic stenosis um, by angiography. And secondary endpoints, device success rate, reduction in angiographic stenosis to 30% or less. And we also looked at uh, rate of well outstanding. So device success rate was significantly better in patients who were treated with directional atherectomy, and uh, there were significantly lower stents placed in the directional atherectomy arm compared to orbital atherectomy. Uh, there was a greater reduction in stenosis following directional atherectomy compared to orbital atherectomy, and this difference persisted after DCB. Uh, directional atherectomy reduced plaque volume more in the entire uh, lesion and in the worst 10 millimeter segment, of the lesion compared to orbital atherectomy. <laughs> and um, this improvement, um, this improved reduction in plaque volume persisted after DCB by IVOS. So the summary of our trial was that this uh, was the uh, first study to evaluate an impact of orbital versus directional atherectomy on atherosclerotic plaque in uh, patients with PAD conducted in prospective had to had randomized fashion compared to orbital atherectomy, directional atherectomy demonstrated a greater uh, plaque volume reduction and uh, luminal gain with significantly fewer uh, stents needed post DCB. Patients will be followed up for uh, three years to determine whether a larger debulking effect of directional atherectomy compared to orbital atherectomy leads to any better clinical outcomes. So how do I choose my atherectomy devices? If this is a calcified lesions in a FEMPOP segment, then I use either directional atherectomy or rotational um, atherectomy with the jet stream. If it's below the knee lesion, then in its distal pop, but distal pop is pretty big in size, then it's either directional or jet stream. If tibial arteries, then I either rotablator or CSI. If it, there is a single vessel runoff and there is a room uh, for filter placement, then CSI. Thank you.